Welcome back to the video series on making use of the eView TPS sensor with the eView Sense app. In this final video, we'll be looking at the different parameters and settings we can play with in order to modify our use of the eView Sense app itself. As we can see right now, I'm at the main menu of the eView Sense app, and I'm going to choose to go to the eView Sense menu at the upper left in order to reveal some of the settings we can play with. There's a bunch of different parameters we can choose from, but I'm going to go th through this list one by one in order to discuss every possibility. If we were to choose the new program button, this would allow us to start a new training program. If you recall, the first time we clicked training, we were automatically prompted to start a program, and then we chose several of the settings that are listed here. If, for example, we wanted to start a new program without completing the old one, just because we want the session time to be longer or shorter, or maybe we want the program goal to be a little bit more difficult, we can play with those different choices right here. If I were to click go, it will automatically begin the first training session of this new program, and I will not be allowed to return to the old training program. That being said, if I went into review mode, I'd be able to see whatever number of training sessions we had left in that previous program. I'm going to hit the back button on the tablet or smartphone in order to return back to the main menu, and then I'm going to jump back into this eViewSense menu at the upper left. If I were to choose the settings option, it will reveal a bunch of different settings I can change that would modify how training or practice works. At the top we can see under current TPS device I have my currently selected TPS sensor. If for example I were to be using a different TPS sensor, perhaps uh, the sensors themselves with a tablet or smartphone are lent out at the clinic and never really actually leave there, so there's many different ones to choose from. I'd be able to come here and actually choose that specific TPS sensor I currently have on my finger so that the system attempts to pair with that. In display value, you get to choose what number is displayed directly below the biosignal symbols when doing active training or the practice mode. By installation default, it will choose the value choice, which represents the true unit of whichever biosignal metric that you're looking at. If you prefer to look at index, this will show you the 0 to 100 success number and let you know how well you're doing. And for people who feel like seeing the numbers makes them anxious or makes them worse at the actual self-regulation task of you know, recovery, relaxation, focus, you can choose hide both. So when you initiate the session, there will simply be no number. Now, regardless of which one of the index or values you choose, you'll be able to jump between index and value during the session by hitting that central biosignal symbol. If you choose hide both, the numbers will be hidden at the start, but if you were to hit the central symbol to make one of them appear, you cannot return to the hidden choice. The auto disconnect timeout is not a very clear setting, but this is the amount of time that will pass before the system will automatically disconnect from the TPS Bluetooth pairing. That's to say that your tablet or smartphone will stop its Bluetooth connection to the sensor if it has not been put into training or practice mode. The purpose of this is to save battery power. This will not automatically turn off your TPS sensor. Under breath pacer, this allows us to change the breath pacer rate to be fast or slower according to what's best for the individual using the app. You can change the little markers, move them forward, move them back, and it's really up to you what you prefer to have in this breath pacer timing scheme. For temperature units, it's rather self-evident, but here you get to select whether the temperature biosignal is displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Under music, you get to decide what from the five choices of feedback music will be heard by the individual if they choose to turn the feedback music on during a practice or training session. Um, you can click on any of the sections right here and hit the play button on the left side if you wish to hear a sample of what that music sounds like. I actually really like all these songs. They're nice, relaxing, or jazzy, or just cool music that can be heard and be used for training. The final option listening here is the version of the EPU Sins app, in which case you can't really select it, but it does let you know what version you're using. In this example, we're using version 1.0. I'm going to hit the back button on this tablet in order to return back to the main menu, and then I'm going to go to the EPU Sins menu at the upper left once more. Now, we can see that there's options for updating the profile, and so if the individual wants to change their name or change their contact email, they can do so here. We can see that we can also add in or change the clinician name and clinician email. So, like in one of the previous videos, if you did not add in the clinician's name or email in order to have a progress report sent to them following training sessions, then you can decide to enter it now at this time and then hit the update button. If we were to go to the change password area, then as the name suggests, you can change the password you use to log into your own personal user profile. 
One of the last selections would be reports, and this is the listing to whom we will be sending the progress report. Now, in order to actually send a progress report following a training session, you need to hit the send button right here while your tablet or smartphone does have an internet connection. And so it's important to give these instructions to the client so that they send you a report. And even if they were to forget to send you a report, you still have the timestamp on the individual session, seeing so exactly what time of day and what day they did occur. Obviously, you need to have the clinician's name and email already entered in order to send this report. And that information is entered, as I told you before, within the profile update section if it was not entered earlier. In the EV Sends menu, we also have this help feature, which I've pointed out to you before. And this is where we can get reminders of how to use every aspect of the EV Sends app and how to actually use the TPS sensor as well. So if you're looking for any of that extra information, you can just click on the heading that's good for you, and it will bring up the appropriate info for you to read and reference for any type of situation. All right, hitting the back button once more. The last option to point out from the EV Sends menu is, in fact, the logout option. If I want to log out from my current user profile, because potentially uh, this device may be lent to someone else and I don't want them accessing my information or training under my name, then choose the logout. And I'll ask if you want to log out. I'm going to click OK. And we'll be returned to the ViewSend's main menu, where we can choose the login or do a practice session that will not be saved. In order to actually save your information, you, of course, have to initiate a training session. So you need to log in to make that training heading available. With this final video complete, this is the end of the video series on making use of the eView TPS sensor and the eView Sense app. I hope you enjoyed these videos and we hope they have helped you on your way to self-regulation mastery.